our vice presidential nominee in the Republican Party, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds. Good morning, Governor. I think this is the first time you've been on the Hugh Hewitt Show. Great to have you. It is, and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. It's great to be with you this morning. Uh, talk to us a little bit about how campaign 2024 is unfolding on the ground in the first state to caucus in 2024. Well, it's an exciting time to be in Iowa because we have all of the candidates crisscrossing the state, hosting events, talking to Iowans. And I think what really um, what excites me is the amount of engagement that I'm seeing from Iowans. All of the candidates have been here a lot, and it, I, I attend a lot of the events. I said, you know, ask me to be there, and I'll do everything I can to be there. And I say that to everyone when they're in the state, but we're seeing record turnout at these events um, and people are engaged. They're staying to the end. They're asking questions and they're bouncing from candidate to candidate. So uh, I, people really are, are, are kicking the tires. They're paying attention. And uh, I think that's good for America. We want to put our best foot forward because ultimately we want to make sure that we have the candidate that can win uh, in 2024 and get this country back on track. Governor Reynolds, how important is it to the Iowa electorate that the candidates address the issue of abortion directly and succinctly and without hemming and hawing? Well, you know, I've passed uh, the heartbeat bill twice, actually, and signed it into law. We did it in 2018. That was a tough year for Republicans. Uh, I signed that into law, went on to uh, win that race. I did not by a lot, but about two percentage points. But I made it across the finish line. Uh, then it was tied up in the courts for several years. Uh, we had a uh, it, it was stayed basically because we had a tie at the uh, Iowa Supreme Court, and so I called a special session. We came back into session. We passed it again by even a larger margin than we did in 2018. We made it clear it wasn't a hypothetical law. Uh, life is important to Iowans, and so they are you know they are that's there's that that's the expectation from Iowa uh, that we have a presidential candidate that's pro-life. Now, Senator, we have a, I mean, Governor, we have a Senator, Senator Tuberville of Alabama, who has placed a hold on more than 300 military promotions. Admiral Stavridis on this show says that affects tens of thousands of military people and their families because uh, Joe Biden and Secretary Austin are violating the Hyde Amendment. And I don't dispute that. They are by facilitating travel by uniformed service members to states where abortion is legal. Nevertheless, I greatly object to that policy. What do you think of Senator Tuberville holding... American military, career military hostage? Well, first of all, we have an administration that doesn't abide by any of the laws or rules. And so I think, you know, that's just another example of why it's important that we pay attention to 2024. We make sure that we beat the Biden administration, get things back on track so these kinds of things aren't happening. Um, you know, so he, he's doing what he believes is the right thing to do, uh, to push back on uh, just a policy that they're disregarding and not paying any attention to. The new Yahoo story says more than half the voters in Alabama disagree with it. But I'm actually going to the tactic itself, Governor. I don't think it's pro-life to hold these families hostage. Do you? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a governor of the state of Iowa. I'm not a, a United States senator. I'm not weighing in on that. So, Hugh, I'm focused on the policies that are important to Iowans, and that's what I'm working on. So that's a decision for the senator to make. Um, but right now, I'm focused on Iowa. We have presidential candidates coming through our state. And we're going to continue to make sure that we're asking them the questions that are important to Iowans. The economy is front and center. I'll tell you that. We want to talk about some of the other issues. But in addition to that, people are seeing their paychecks not go as far. They're seeing an open border. We're experiencing um, exponential increase in compensation of fentanyl and human trafficking. Uh, we're not, uh, you know, we, we are seeing that in the state of Iowa. So, you know, that, those are some of the things that Iowans are interested in. Of course, life is front and center, but they also... Uh, want to see this economy turned around. They want to see our border closed. They want to make sure that we have safe communities. And we've spent a lot of time in Iowa talking about parental choice. I'm proud to say that, you know, I, I the first bill I signed into law this last, <clears throat> excuse me, this last legislative session was uh, an opportunity to give parents the, the, the choice up to where they would send uh, their kids to school, an, an ESA, a savings account. And uh, we actually have led a educational freedom revolution across the country. And so, you know, those are the things that we're dealing with uh, in the state of Iowa. I do think school choice is that a huge issue for Republicans in Iowa, Arizona, Ohio, Florida, West Virginia. 
Arkansas, I'm forgetting one of the seven, have done great things, and you did lead the way, so my compliments. Yeah, thank you. It really is. It's really the one way. You know, we passed a law to say no irreversible transgender surgeries. We said, parents, I mean, can you believe that we actually had to put into statute the fact that parents will be the primary decision maker for their children's education? We said no to critical race theory. Uh, You know, we, we did all of those, but ultimately... It's school choice that is will be the most impactful because parents now will have the choice and the funding will follow, the per-pupil funding. Uh, if they don't agree with what's being taught uh, to their children in, 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 in their uh, schools, then they have the opportunity to go to a private school. Now, Governor, if I go back to abortion for a second, uh, two days ago in Ohio, Measure 1 failed. I was a big proponent of Measure 1, but it failed. It's being interpreted as a vote for um, abortion rights at least larger than those that would be allowed in Ohio if that um, referendum fails. What did you make of that? And is, in fact, abortion a losing issue for Republicans in 2024? It, it's, no, it's not a losing issue. I don't believe that. I was a pro-life governor, as I said, and I won in 2018. Not very many Republicans. It was a bad year for Republicans. We lost a congressional uh, seat. We lost seats in the uh, House, but I was able to uh, you know, win, and then won again in this last election cycle in 2022 by nearly 20 points. Um, so Iowans know uh, that I am a pro-life governor, Governor Kemp. I mean, you can go Governor DeSantis. Many of the governors uh, that won re-election are, are pro-life. Uh, I think, you know, we never, they always want to, they never talk about what Democrats want to do, and all you have to do is look to Minnesota. You know, they are the extreme position. They are the ones that want abortion up until the moment of birth and sometimes after. And they just passed th- that law in Minnesota. So they like to not address the fact that when is it not okay to take a baby's life? Um, and I would say that they are, uh, they believe that there are no exceptions, that right up until the moment of birth that you ought to be able to kill a baby. And I just completely, that's, that's horrible, horrific. Uh, unconscionable, and and that's where they want to go. That's where they are going. They try to act like it's not, but the fact of the matter is, uh, if they get a chance to vote to vote on it, that's where they go. Uh, I'm talking with Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds. Governor, uh, former President Trump has been critical of you for not endorsing him. Will you appear with him at any debate or at any event that he does in the Hawkeye State? Oh, for heaven's sakes, yes, I have. I have said to every single candidate. You know, let me know when you're in the state. Let me know when you're having an event. Now, I can't manage them. They have to let me know. I can't watch their schedule and then try to show up. But if they let me know, I've appeared with I've appeared with President Trump early on. I uh, did an event in Davenport. It was a great event. It was packed out. Um, I've appeared with almost every one of the candidates. And if I haven't yet, we're working on a time to get together. But he has been a longstanding tradition. I'm, I'm not going to say, you know, maybe down the road I won't endorse, but Listen, we have the we have the awesome responsibility of having the first in the nation caucus, and I want Iowans to hear from the candidates. So I want them to feel like they have a fair chance. I want to welcome them to Iowa. I want to tell them, you know, events that maybe they should be at. I'll try to join them when I can. But you know, that's and, and that's been a tradition for years and years uh, by governors of both parties and many of the elected officials. And so. Um, you know, more than happy, invited them to the fair side chats. And so um, would absolutely appear with him. Governor, my new spidey sense just tingled. You said, I'm not going to say I won't endorse before the caucus. (laughs) So I guess that means you probably will endorse before the caucus, because that was unsolicited, that you just put that in there uh, as a marker. Uh, Will you endorse before the caucuses? Well, I don't know. I just like I'm, you know, I'm gonna. I said, you know, I want to stay neutral. I want him to come. Uh, I'll be anxious to see what happens with the first debate. Um, but you know, I'm always wary of it. You know, to never say never. But you know, right now we're gonna stay neutral. I've made that very clear. Um, and so we're gonna like keep welcoming, welcoming, welcoming them. Oh, I need another cup of coffee. Harder than it seems. <laughs> but uh, well, well, Governor, last an important time. question. The Big Ten is now the Big Eighteen. Should we let Stanford oh in? Oh, come on. It's just getting crazy, isn't it? It's getting crazy. So here we go. I don't know. Well, are they going <laughs> to score any touchdowns in Iowa this year? Because that's actually always an issue in Iowa. <laughs> yes. I can say yes. <laughs> you, your offensive coordinator is on the hot spot. Uh, Governor Reynolds, always good to talk to you. Thank you for joining me. Come back often. I think we Thank made a little you. news there.